Roy has got his hands on the only Drone Pro 15 in the country. Sent from Night Vision Gear UK, he's looking forward to stretching the barrels of his 22250 up to 300 yards on a tricky fox. And the 15 could be key to making it happen. The main reason we're doing this with this particular fox is because it's not overly lamp shy, but this one is definitely cool shy. So we've, uh, I've noticed it out a couple of times before. We've had a squeak and all of a sudden it, uh, it just hightails it. So when you've got a fox like that, it's, uh, it's quite nice just to bait one in and uh, spend an evening, well, hopefully not an evening, but uh, <laughs> maybe an hour or two just uh, sitting and waiting. You may remember Roy head shooting bunnies at crazy distances on a golf course last year. That was with the 10 times zoom version of the drone, but the 15 with its powerful infrared illuminator will deliver a picture quality allowing a shooter to extend his or her range if he or she has done his or her homework. That's enough for quality. We've set the rifle up for about 300 yards anyway, um, so anything that comes out from between 1 and 300, then we should be pretty much smack on. We're going to pitch up here, we'll have a look through the two different scopes, so we've got the Drone Pro 10 hours and the Drone Pro 15, and we'll just have a scan through both of them and uh, see what the target acquisition is like, but also there should be a few rabbits coming back out as well and it will give us a, a good comparison of the, uh, the two different um, scopes yeah. and what they offer. With the coast clear, Roy tries to show the difference between the two models of drone we have with us tonight. One on the rifle, the other handheld. We're looking there at rabbits at about 300 there. You wouldn't have any problem in taking a shot at that. And you've got very good identification as well, so you couldn't mistake them for anything else. So we've got some quite good definition there. So that's where we came over the bank. Well, Jim came over the bank to put the bait out. And we've got a relatively nice field of view to pick up any foxes coming in over the top of the bank into the feed. So, I'm happy with that. What we'll do now is we'll have a look at the image the Drone Pro 10 offers at those exact same two rabbits there. And then it'll give us some sort of idea of the difference the extra five times magnification makes on this unit. Okay, we've got the image here, looking up with exactly the same two rabbits. Well, there's a few more rabbits now. They're all just running around playing. But you can see the difference in the image at 300 that we were getting. Also, you've got to bear in mind that the IR on the new drone 15 is more powerful as well, so we're getting more illumination at those ranges. Oh, hang on. There's the fox. You got it? You see it? Okay, the fox is there, so I'm going to get the Drone Pro 15 on it. Roy spots our fox much closer oh than God. we had expected, but he's not going to let the opportunity pass. He shoots it cleanly. Just for comparison, here is the fox through the 10 times and the 15 times. It has been a successful and relatively quick foxing evening, but with all those scraps used for baiting, he needs a fresh rabbit for the ferrets. So again, this is a rabbit at about 250. I've used the drone 10 for the last few months now, lamping, and it's been perfectly ample, well, perfectly good, it's been superb, actually, for going around foxing. Um, and it's accounted for a lot of foxes recently. Um, the 15 does just give you the edge if you're sitting up and you have got to stretch the shots, although at night, you know, it is questionable exactly how far you want to stretch those shots. And I think if you're shooting to 250, 
300 and that is more than enough for most. Roy now has to think how he's going to justify having a Drone 10 and a 15 in the cabinet.